Please welcome Denise on stage. So I was before, so now I'm going to be more uh, concrete about these things that we've been talking. So I'm going to try to be as macro as possible. There's a lot of technical things here, but uh, what I'm interested in these technologies is how can we make these real, not just talk. And as well, I'm particularly interested in blockchain and AI for good. And I think Mauritius is a fantastic place where actually I believe this can actually be put in place. Um, not just because of being a fantastic island that is, like Mark Twain said, a bit like a paradise on earth, but as well because being a young democracy, a young country, you have all the opportunities to do this and not having the, the areas of legacy that are very important for this. So, how can we prosper with these technologies? And uh, so, I'm, I'm a writer and I'm a, as well um, a person that's been discussing and researching about these areas, but as well, I'm doing a lot of technology things, especially on blockchain and AI. I actually build a software that is used right now by a couple of governments on the planet, and uh, we have actually one African uh, pilot at the moment with close to 1 million people that is going on using blockchain technology. And these are two of my groups where I'm reflecting about this. So, what I'm going to be talking is about precisely where the conversion between AI technologies and blockchain are shifting everything we're doing. So, I start with the lecture. This is still the world economy, a huge part of the world economy. And ironically, when you look at blockchain technology or even machine learning, it's a digital ledger. So, trying to make this very simplistic, it's ledgers. These, these books, the notaries, governments, in banks, they still exist. You find it all over the world for land registration, for anything, for even for healthcare. So, what we're trying to do with blockchain technology and AI is putting this digital. It's not, let's be very, very simple. I know that there's a lot of layers of technology, but we're digitalizing this. And until we digitalize this properly, nothing else will work. So, this is a very fundamental thing that we need to think. It's not so complicated as we sometimes make it happen is digitalizing this process and making it effectively, scalable and useful for us. So, cryptography. This is one of the things that the blockchain technology made happen. The idea of crypto in the sense of crypto security and as well digitizing data and making it easier and secure. So then, remember the internet in 1998? We're still there. This is actually 1998, there were a lot of people saying, including CNN, that there's no future in the internet, it's very difficult to scale, it's a completely flaw. In 2000, we had the dot-com boom, and now the internet is the biggest industry on the planet, the biggest money-making, the biggest corporations. We are here when it comes to blockchain and AI. Of course, as you look at the beginning of the internet, you could not really stream anything, you could not even send an email properly. So we have a lot of these things happening right now when it comes to AI and blockchain. So, when we look at blockchain, we create a trusted record of human data, ID, and of course our present history. And machine learning and blockchain are not two different things, are things that are working in parallel. Axel mentioned the idea of gamification for blockchain. Blockchain opens and works because of algorithms. Algorithms are part of machine learning. Of course, machine learning is when you have a machine that starts learning. That's therefore AI. This is particularly important. So, we are in a digital data-driven world, as all the speakers before mentioned. But it's not so much about the data, it's about the identity of the data. Our own identity, our government's identity, our healthcare records, our financial records, and making sure that this helps us get a better performance, get better results, and help us be more prosperous. And this is very important. But as fire and electricity made a massive revolution in the history of mankind, when you put blockchain technology and the AI technologies, and as I mentioned, AI is still in its inception, we have something revolutionary that never happened in the history of mankind. This is a very important thing to bear in mind. We need to start learning about this, and we need, first of all, start using it now, not in two years, now. 
All of us. So, how can you look at it? So we need to look at, there's a lot of considerations this. I'm going to put some of this in my slide share. And I have a lot of things written in intelligentishq.com. And as well, I'm providing things to um, Transcom. But we need to look at all these different things. So there's 10 things here. So risk and warranties, first of all. This is not a simple task. It's a very sensitive task that will change everything. But at the same time, it's still mankind. It's still operations that have to be done at the scale. So there's a lot of possibilities, but at the end of the day, it's about digitizing the ledger that I mentioned before. It's about digitizing identity and contextualizing this and making sure this is scalable and useful to use. So, very important thing, and there's a lot of information here. So, we need to make sure, first of all, that the basics are in place. We need to have a strategy, but we need to start now for small-scale projects and then make it bigger. The pilot, test, and make sure that we take things to the next level. And of course, as I mentioned before in the panel, for the ones over here, 90% of the world economy is still not digital. And this is the fundamental thing we need to consider. Because this is very beautiful in theory, and of course the biggest corporations in the world are the ones that are managing our data, and they own our data, which is not what should be. We should own our data, but we need to be responsible about that. And we should have not as well let them do everything they want. I work with most of them, and I have nothing against them, but we need to be responsible on two sides. And I think part of the responsibility is how can we digitize this 90% of the world economy in a scalable way, in a constructive way, in a way that governments are part of the play. And of course, there's a lot of libertarians in technology trying to take governments out of the equation. No, governments are more important than ever. We have to organize ourselves as a society, and this is fundamental. So, the world GDP. So I think this is particularly important. I want to mention two things right now, with, uh, probably very sensitive, very important. So, anyone knows how much is the world GDP? The numbers are more or less here. 78 trillion dollars. Okay? 78 trillion dollars. And as you see, you have different economies. In the next five years, most of the, most of the economies actually in Africa are going to take most of the Western world. And then, of course, China and India are becoming the biggest players by a lot of reasons, and Indonesia and so forth. So I think the point right now is this. The world debt is 247 billion trillion, I'm sorry, trillion dollars, okay? So we have 878 trillion dollars of GDP and around 247 trillion dollars of debt, okay? This is the fundamental problem when it comes to blockchain and AI. Is that, okay, this bubble of debt, and actually in some cases is actually bigger than this number, is here, you cannot just erase it. But as we put machines managing our data, machines are supposed to be mathematical, Ration. Can we do this with this debt? This is not rational. Okay? So this is the fundamental problem that governments have to tackle. When we talk about cryptocurrencies, and there's a lot of good things and bad things we did, a cryptocurrency is a digitizing a value transaction. So the money we have right now, which is mostly paper, we have a massive amount of paper money, which is the biggest asset in the world actually, is the paper money. It's the biggest technology, the paper money that we use in our pockets for transactions. So, the point right now is that as we digitize this economy with artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence is supposed to be rational. It's supposed to be something that helps us looking at rationality. Are we rationals? No, we're not, as humans. So that's the fundamental thing we need to consider when you look at the artificial intelligence and blockchain technology. So, then it comes to the data. So we have government, governmental data, industry data, society data, healthcare, and so forth. Then we have open governmental data, which is, should be what most of governments should be doing. And then we have regulators, central banks, and financial institutions. And of course, healthcare. As digital becomes increasingly more important, healthcare is critical. So how can we look at this? The blockchain technology is supposed to create identity for this. And the AI help the identity of the data and the identity of information to improve our performance and our action. So, how can we look at this? So, in mature economies, there's a legacy system, and it's much more difficult to do things. In emerging markets, there's a massive opportunity because in emerging markets, 
we have no legacy systems and there's a much younger population that can actually learn faster and improve and change things. But we need to be active on this. So if you look at the history of money, so from the last 600 before Christ until the present, and the present if you look right now we are more or less here, the digital money, we started this but as I mentioned it's still not completely there, but we right now this part, we have the systems of identity. And these systems of identity are precisely being built as we speak with blockchain technology, especially due to smart contract technology and with machine learning technology. This is the first stage of mainstream artificial intelligence, even if it's very basic. So, but does it digitize and identify identity, society, governments? We have a big challenge and a big opportunity. The governments that will lead these will be the most profitable and most prosperous countries in the planet. And actually, Mauritania is the biggest GDP from Africa, congratulations. It's an achievement, okay? And as well as becoming bigger than actually most of the Western countries. So I think you have an opportunity to take this to the next level using this. But we need to look at this, especially data is the critical element. So how can you look at this? How can you digitize an architecture for society where blockchain and AI helps? And they remember a very important thing. Blockchain and AI are tools, nothing more than tools, like any other technology. So, these are the different technologies we build on the day to day operations. So, from customer engagement to digital transformation enterprise, digital business strategy, UI, UX, and then blockchain and AI. And why blockchain and AI together? Because of the smart contract identity that is necessary for building these technologies and scaling transactions, the ledger part. And of course, it's kind of this part here. So when you look at the blockchain AI and identity or DNA, we're looking at four areas business, financial and trading, legal and regulatory, and technology. And then, of course, we have all of these. We have holistic concepts of internet of trust, decentralized distributed database, good economics, tokenomics, and all the ICO part, ledger full scale ID, smart contracts, machine learning AI, consensus, and mining systems and cloud computing, more advanced systems. So how can we take these to make things happen? So if you look at machine learning, we're still the beginning, but it's already making a huge revolution. And right now, how can we take these languages to improve the way we deal as humans as well? And of course, how can you look at the different areas of the mature economies and mature markets and taking these basic solutions to improve society? So as you see here, governments and business, we have the speed of adoption, which is the biggest thing, that we have all different areas from financial energy, supply chain, real estate, media, public sector, and of course healthcare and manufacturing. And of course the impact of these technologies is going to be bigger and bigger, but we need to be prepared for that. So, and then in terms of the data and how we put these things together, we need to look at the transactions and the types of data we were mentioned before. So, Proof of authority for governments. So our data, the most sensitive data of society, is the data owned by governments. But at the moment, we have the most sensitive data about us is the biggest players of Silicon Valley and the Chinese players nowadays. So we need to make sure there's a bridge between that data. That data exists already. So one of my panelists mentioned that data and identity is broken. But actually it's more fragmented than actually broken. We have it compartmentalized in a lot of different places. We just need to make sure that we glue it and we make it work together. And I think this is where we need to look at this. There's a lot of work being done, there's a lot of projects, but we need to be much more looking at the data and the different areas. So and as you look at right now the data, especially the central banks, there's a massive opportunity here. There's a massive opportunity for the central banks and the governments to start looking at the financial data, the tax data, the healthcare data, and creating an identity holistic for the country. And that's where smart contract technology can actually help significantly. And of course, we, we're talking about technologies that are very, very um, disruptive, but as well, very impactful for everything you do. So you just need to look at the fabric and take this into the fabric of society. And I will pass a couple of slides so that go a bit faster. I have a couple of, so conclusions. Um, for the last 30 seconds, AI and blockchain are right now the full center. So we are still in a very, very early stage. So the opportunity, as I was mentioned before, is for all of us. 
but you need to make sure that they take these technologies and they start using it through education, programs and pilots and create a sandbox for governments between banks, industry players, big players of technology and adapt it towards the needs of the, bank, the governments and the companies that we have in society. So that's a lot of more research, I'll pass this, I finish my time. Um, I think the, the last probably thing is that we need to make sure that we are prepared for this. And being prepared is starting now. Starting to work, starting to exercise, and creating plans for action. We can all be part of this. We cannot separate people from this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Luis. We are the sponsors.